This is Glenn over at Pittman Photo Supply. Um, today we have a, a really special person here. It's a good friend of mine. This is Clyde Butcher. Um, I spent a lot of time out working with him, uh, and uh, I'm just really excited to have him visiting us here in the store today. Um, he came by to uh, check out his new um, Fuji uh, GFX 100S. That's a 100 megapixel uh, a camera. And uh, it's exciting because it is so tiny. I mean, it's it's less it's less weight than the uh, the Canon uh, four, the four five D Mark IV. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's lighter than that. So, and it's a hundred megapixels, and the sensor is actually about one point seven times the size. It has ibis of a uh, yeah of a full frame sensor. Yes, and it has ibis, so it does have in body stabilization of the uh, of the sensor. So. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, and we, we've just been playing with some adapters of Clyde's to let him use um, some of his tilt shift lenses. Uh, I've, I've, I've set up for all Canon. Uh, because uh, Fuji doesn't make any tilt shifts. And I'm a tilt shift person. Uh, when you're doing landscapes, you want everything. Well, using a view camera, you always have the back level. I'm just used to that. So I have to have this thing level. And that means if I want foreground, I gotta lower the lens. If I want sky, I have to raise the lens up. And then of course, uh, you can do stitches, you can do panoramas by moving the lens back and forth, which it doesn't change the perspective. And th um, my other lenses, the, the, uh, the 17 can tilt shift, the Nikon 19 tilt and shift, 24 tilt and shift and the 50 tilt and shift have a bracket to the lens, so the lens is actually attached to the tripod. So the circle doesn't change, if that makes any sense. The circle is constant, you can just move the camera around the circle. Pretty exciting. And and Glenn started working with me, I think it was 94. So yeah, somewhere around there, yeah, yeah. it would have been. But um, but I'm just going to mention the reason he was saying that he has to keep that back straight up and down is obviously a lot of, with his landscapes, there's a lot of trees in there. You don't want the trees leaning all over the place by tilting the back. You get I know big you can do it in Photoshop. Right, yeah. But, but it doesn't look right. Yeah, it's better to do, if you can get the thing right in camera, it's always better to get it right in camera first. Um, that just leaves you more data to manipulate later on when you do need to do something else on in right. Photoshop. Right. So, and it's interesting to talk to Clyde about this right now because back, back in the day when I worked for Clyde, it wasn't a lot of Photoshop we were doing. Most no. of the Photoshop involved was really with uh, Nikki's uh, when we were doing some prints of her hand-colored artwork. Right. Um, but Photoshop was not existent. Um, or, I mean, it was existent, but I mean, for us in the darkroom, we didn't really started, do much with it. I started it. printing her work. I think she started about 1999 or 2000. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah. The first, the first, uh, first printers. Yeah, yeah, it was from pretty early inkjet printers. It, yeah. it, was, it was pretty amazing to see what we've got going now. Um, it's, it's really incredible. But yeah, this, this is a pretty phenomenal piece of technology. And when we compare it, we were just actually talking about the equipment that Clyde used to carry around in the swamp. Um, well, the, the lenses were more the weight than the camera. That's right, that's right. The, 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 some of the wide angle lenses and, and some of the longer lenses, yeah, the entire lens would weigh more than this whole camera and the lens even. Right. So The camera weighed 45 pounds. Yeah, yeah. And then you have to think about all the film holders we had to carry around as well. So those were, were not particularly light either. $600 so. a piece? Yeah, they were, they were uh, something else. Uh, oh, yeah. So, so. This, this is like shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah, yeah. Nice, and, nice and easy in comparison. But... With this megabyte, megabyte thing, eight footprints are a breeze. Yeah. Can we see the sensor? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Real quick here. So right now we've got a. There's a Clyde's got a his 90 tilt shift on there and a Tech Art adapter. So that uh, allows you to mount Canon EF lenses. Um, so we're going to go ahead and pop that off there, and you can get a look at that full frame or bigger than full frame. Again, it's a 1.7 times. So Fuji's calling this a large format sensor. Um, but it, it's uh, it definitely compared to a full frame or an APS-C that most people are going to have. It's, it's definitely big. And it's also impressive that it's stabilized in such a small body. Um, six, you know, six stops. Yeah, 
So yeah, you normally need, um, you normally do need some uh, room for that sensor to move. So the fact that they managed to do that in such a little space is, is really incredible. Yeah. Um, okay. It's yeah, it's just a, it's it's really uh, amazing the things that, that the technology has done, um, and and it's great that also just because because it's so much lighter to carry around and so much you can really concentrate more on the actual photography even mm -hmm. than worrying about opening getting the camera out and the dark side there any lens uh, in the world you couldn't put on this right right uh, i even put my leica lenses on it mm -hmm. you don't get the full frame right but you get a two by three oh yeah yeah them. Well, and that's actually, that's one of the great advantages to some of the newer mirrorless cameras. Um, the, the flange distance, so the distance from the actual mount to the actual sensor is now so short compared to any of the old lenses. Um, 50 millimeters. Yeah, you, you, you can, you know, you can put, adapt almost any lens to it. You can physically connect it to the camera. You can basically get it to work on there. Um, I, I personally, I've been using a Nikon uh, Z7. Um, that one's actually got one of the shortest flange distances, so I've been able to adapt pretty much every lens I own, and I've, I've got adapters for almost every single lens I own, and I've got stuff from Canon, Pentax, Minolta, um, Leica. It, it, it just, it's crazy the different stuff you can put on there, and it's, it's a lot of fun to be able to utilize some really old lenses as well. I have another so. adapter for this camera. Oh, right, right. That for, you use the medium format lenses because it has, uh, it, you have the shift in the lens, and also shifting the adapter. So you can shift up, over, and down, down, over. Oh, nice, Put nice. six shots together. Right. And create. Huge. Well, yeah, I mean, how, I mean, that's like got to be a pretty much a gigapixel file at that oh, yeah. point. Oh, well, it's 16, 16 bit. I think this is around 600 pixels. 600. 600 megapixels. Or megabytes. Megabytes, yeah. yeah. So it's big, yeah. So that'll be a huge, huge file. So um, definitely that, that is one of the trickier parts as these files start getting bigger. The, the, the requirements on a, a computer just backing everything up is always fun. And well, that's obviously really important as the well. The thing is I don't shoot that much. Right, right. If I shoot three pictures a day, that's a lot. If anybody can take three pictures a day, they're amazing. Three good pictures. Good pictures, good pictures yes. If anybody could take a hundred bad pictures. That's right. But to take three good pictures, taking one good picture a day. Is, yeah, that's that's actually a major challenge in yes. and of, of itself. So right. yeah, three pictures is definitely uh, definitely something. Yeah. So, um, all right. So yeah, actually, one other thing that was interesting too, uh, just to mention the Peak Design strap. This was Clyde's choice here. Um, actually, because one of the things that's super nice and easy to get it on and off of the, the um, camera. And, and I, I picked this one out for him, though, because of the color. This is the new sage green one. I just thought this would be a real nice color for him out, out in the swamp and, and whenever he's out in the woods shooting. So a yeah. little, little more natural looking there. Can you show the strap real? Hmm? Yeah, so um, Peak Design straps, it's great. There's just this little, little puck with the red rim around there. Um, just pops right out and it's really solidly on there. Uh, it's, it's a really, uh, really tough uh, line. Basically, there's actually a multi-layer line that actually will give you a warning. If you start seeing some of the other colors inside there, you know that that line is frayed and you need to replace it quick. Um, and recently, actually, Peak Design, some people don't like the little red trim. Peak Design actually just came out with some with actually just black, no, no red trim on there. And then we do have those in stock as well, so. Um, but yeah, there's some great, great colors now. They've also got a really nice, almost sapphire blue. It's I think called Midnight. That's it's a great color too. So in addition to the traditional black and the, the silver gray that they had, but this is, but again, this combination, this is this is great. We've um, we were just playing also with another Canon lens on here and the Tech Art adapter. We, we just updated the firmware and it's it, autofocus. Yeah, and it, it autofocused and everything. So that's that's really great. I'm. I'm used to using all my, I have mostly dumb adapters for my lenses, so, you know, I don't get any autofocus uh, features or anything. Most lenses I have don't have autofocus. Right, right. Well, that's true, I'm, too. Yeah. I'm not used to autofocus. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, you said you had the Pentax adapter, though, right? Uh, oh, yeah. The Pentax. Because this will be exciting to use on your 800. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this well, would be yeah. really cool to have that 800 millimeter lens. It also goes to 1200. 
1.4. Oh, you've got the converter for it as well. 4. So 1,200, yeah, on this would be a really amazing. Uh, that'd be really cool. Shift, too. Oh, oh, and you know oh, the adapter's got shift. Yeah. And yeah, and that lens should have a ton of coverage. So, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. So, wow, that'd be really an awesome shot. I mean, it's too bad it's so hard for you to haul that out west. I mean, there's some amazing oh, it's not, shots. Yeah, it's so hard to put in a truck. <laughs> oh, well, that's true. You drive, you drive out on a lot of your trips like that. Yeah. So, yeah, that would be amazing. Um, that would be an awesome lens to yeah, shoot with, and, the, uh, with the mountains. And Monument Valley would be great. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I was looking for that lens in you know, Monument Valley. Oh my gosh! Well, yeah, especially you get some uh, moon moon shots in in yeah. that in the background would be phenomenal right. with that. So that's a thirty-five pound lens. Oh <laughs> yeah, that that one you might want to bring a little help along too. I guess just to have to haul. Cold you have deal. to haul it on any hikes, anyways. Okay. All right. Well, well. Thank you so much, Clyde. I mean, thanks for taking the time and, and letting us uh, talk to everyone well, out there and, and in Instagram land. And help help me find the camera. And, oh yeah. And we worked on it together to figure out how it worked. See, what what people don't realize when you go to B and B and W B and B and B and H is is a it's a nice thing to have, but if you really want camera gear. You need to come to a local place so that you could, they can help you with, with it. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I I live in Venice. We have a store in Bradenton. Right. That I, uh, right. Yeah. Johnson Photo Imaging. Shout yeah. out to them. That's a really great store. Right. Uh, yeah. So I go in any problems. It helps me. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. I mean, that's one of the things that we've always loved to do at Pittman Photo Supply. I mean, Pittman Photo Supply. Um, been in business since 1928 and, and the customer has always been a big focus of, of the business so uh, we want you to come in here be able to ask questions you know when you purchase a camera from us you know that's not the end of the transaction we want to be here for you um, make sure that you're going to be able to enjoy using the camera and know how to use the camera for instance um, we've even actually just started doing some some cam talk uh, you know it's a little hard for us to do actual classes in in this space now but now we've got some cam talks so we can have some one-in-one -on -one training sessions um what did they run about 40 49 dollars is for 45 minutes yeah 49 dollars 45 minutes and you get a one-on-one -on -one with a training session so um but besides that too just you know come in you can ask questions um also quick mention to october first second and third we're going to have Caligaz in for a used equipment uh, buying event and we're going to try and see if we have some other uh, guests here as well for that so um, check back in we'll, we'll post up on on any other information that we have thanks very much for watching thanks Clyde thank you and good make sure